Bottom line, just don't buy an FDM printer. You're going to be disappointed. Hey guys, welcome back to Gulfstream Outdoors, where I help you get the lure out of your head and onto your line. I've been getting a lot of messages about what 3D printer to buy if you want to make fishing lures or fishing lure molds. And I also have been getting a lot of messages from people saying, you know, I have this printer and I want to print lures and molds and it's not working out for me. And I went looking around on the internet to see if I could figure out, you know, if anybody's already made a video like this or recommendations and I couldn't find one. So I thought I'd make this one for you guys today because I do not want you to spend your hard earned money on a printer that you're not gonna like. So when you go looking on the internet for 3D printers, you find FDM printers by and large. They've just been around a lot longer. There's a lot more content around them. And for like general purpose 3D printing, it's where kind of everybody gets started. But that's really changed over about the past, I'd say two years with the kind of explosion of resin 3D printers and the decrease in the price point, the wide variety of models that you have out there, the sizes that you can print, and the material or the resin has really advanced well beyond what it was just a couple of years ago. So if your primary goal is to make fishing lures and fishing lure molds, I just can't even come close to recommending any FDM printer to do that. You really want to go resin SLA printer. And here's a couple of reasons why. The big reason is the material that these machines print in. With FDM printers, you're going to be using uh, materials like PLA, uh, PETG, maybe ABS. There's a few newer ones out there. But the key point for fishing lures, uh, more specifically molds, is the heat deflection temperature of these is really low. ABS has one of the higher heat deflection temperatures and it's around 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And heat deflection is just when the material gets heated to a certain point and you apply pressure to it, is it going to deform or change shape? So 220 is way too low for plastisol, right? When you inject or even open pour, your plastisol is gonna be between 300 and 350-ish degrees. Now, you can do it, I've seen people do it, right? I don't wanna say you can't, but your mold is going to deform, if not immediately, over time. And when you're injecting, especially hot plastisol, you're gonna be putting yourself in a danger zone, I think, that you probably don't wanna be in. Best case, you're gonna get lures changing size over time, which is not what we want either. So when it comes to resins, they've really made major advances just over the past year or two in the types of materials you can print on a resin 3D printer. When they first came out, you know, most of the material had about the same heat deflection temperature as your ABS or PETG stuff. But now we can get resins like Soriatek Sculpt or Sculpt Ultra that have heat deflection temperatures well above 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Sculpt Ultra is around 420. Sculpt Regular is around 320 which is well within reason for a plastisol injection, right? I have molds that I have literally produced thousands of baits in uh, over the past six months that have no signs of any deformation whatsoever and produce the same exact bait they did when I first started. The second thing is the level of detail that you get, right? I don't know any fishing lure maker that doesn't like detail, right? Like you want a shiny bait, you want super hyper detail. That's generally what you're looking for. FDM printers don't come anywhere near the resolution of SLA printers. So the best way to show this is just to show you, right? So here's two lures I made, same exact model I made them from. One is FDM, one is SLA resin printer, right? It's night and day. Now, I didn't sand the FDM one, but I didn't sand the resin one either, right? That's kind of the point. The resin I can take off the printer, post-process it and paint it and I'm good. To get anywhere close to the same results on the FDM, I'm gonna be sitting there sanding for probably quite some time. And I hate sanding, sanding is terrible. Why would you do that to yourself? And that quality goes across the board, right? Modern SLA printers in the summer of 2021 where we are, are generally 4K resolution, right? You can get some 2K, you can, uh, they're coming out with some 5K resolution, 
And really it comes down to the layer height. When you're talking about an FDM printer, the kind of best quality uh, that most people are gonna get is a 0.12 millimeter layer height, right? That's the space between the layers as it's building up the model. On an SLA 3D printer, by default, it's 0.05 millimeters. So over 100% better resolution by line count than FDM. This is not even close. So let's talk about price. There was a point in time where resin SLA printers were way more expensive than their FDM counterparts. However, that's largely gone away. You can get into a small form factor resin SLA printer like the Creality LD200 blah blah that I have and it's gonna be around $250, right? Now you're not gonna be able to print massive molds with this thing, but you can print, print great masters with this thing. You can print uh, smaller molds, single cavity molds, even multi-cavity molds if you have a small lure. Uh, and it's a great entry point, right? Now you compare that to my artillery Sidewinder here, which was $500. Now it'll print a lot bigger but in lure space, bigger is not always what you're looking for, right? And worst case, I can take my model and chop it up into multiple smaller parts and print it on my resin 3D printer and glue them together afterwards, right? And I'm gonna get that same amazing quality that I get on the resin printer. So even if you look at entry level FDM printers, I did a quick Amazon search and even the entry level ones are generally around $170. So for roughly 80 to $100 more, I'm in a resin 3D printer where I wanna be eventually anyways, and I'm good to go. Now you move up a size from the smaller resin 3D printer into something like the Elegoo Saturn I have, which is an amazing entry level mid-size 3D printer, and you're looking at $500, $499, and you can pretty much print almost whatever you want to here. The, the top height of the overall length, I think is around 10 inches, and you can print just about any mold you want. If you wanna step up a little bit better, I think in build quality, the Epax E10 I have is just a monster workhorse, and it's $699. The price difference is not that great, especially when you know that one, you can use the materials that you pretty much need to use for injection molds. And two, the quality just blows away anything on the FDM side. So I don't want you to get frustrated right out of the gate with 3D printing. If you buy an FDM printer, I think you're gonna be a little frustrated. SLA is just way more suited for fishing lures and fishing lure molds, bottom line. I'll have links to the resin SLA printers that I recommend below that I've actually used. Take care, everybody. Tight lines.